Howdy, Greylog people. It's Chris again. Uh, today, we're going to discuss the Greylog reference architecture. Uh, we're going to go through the minimum configuration, uh, the basic components that uh, are involved in the, the stack. We're going to talk about some of the things you need to consider when you are trying to expand and when you might want to expand and for what reasons. And we're going to go through some of the uh, gotchas that you need to look out for uh, in planning an appropriately sized cluster for your new Greylog environment. So let us get started. OK, so uh, we're going to start with the very basic Greylog uh, configuration. Uh, we have a lot of customers out there who will put a single node out there, but we recommend that you split those apart. We'll talk about that in just a second. In the very smallest configuration, there's going to be at least two nodes uh, for a Greylog stack. The first is going to be containing both the Greylog and the MongoDB components. Uh, the basic components are Greylog, MongoDB, and uh, OpenSearch or Elasticsearch, depending on uh, which one you're using. We support both today. Eventually, not too long from now, we will be doing entire we'll support entirely in OpenSearch, and Elasticsearch will be deprecated. So, if you're planning to create a new environment today, I would recommend you use OpenSearch. Uh, so that you don't have to do any conversions or, or uh, migrations in the near to medium future. Uh, so the components, each of these components has their own job. The MongoDB acts as the store for our uh, database information, our configuration information for Greylog. Uh, so it is what I like to refer to as the brains of the operation. It contains all of the uh, configuration information. It contains your log information for the Greylog audit trail. It contains some of your lookup tables, uh, but mainly it's gonna be your configuration for all the different things that Greylog does. And so when you need to back up, Mongo is where you're going to back up. There's a function called Mongo dump and Mongo restore, which are the simplest ways to get that out of there. There are many more complex ways. And we'll talk about some of that uh, later in the video. But uh, Mongo is the first component you need to be concerned with. And you'll notice in the diagram, it cohabits the, the node with Greylog. Greylog is um, the uh, web interface for the stack. It is the processing interface for the stack. It allows you to take in, modify, uh, uh, enrich, trim, uh, otherwise process data before you insert it into storage and Elasticsearch and OpenSearch uh, serve that purpose today. They're storage for our log manager, our logs that, that come in and get stored. So the simplest one, we're looking at a one to 10 gigs per day. You'll notice that uh, each of these servers uh, is uh, has a configuration recommendation. Get that out of the way. Uh, the Elasticsearch server or OpenSearch servers we recommend eight CPU cores, 24 gigs of RAM. For the Greylog servers, eight CPU co cores and only 16 gigs of RAM and just one server of each. Pretty modest requirements for hardware uh, for this low end. You could possibly get away with less depending on what you're doing, but this is what we recommend. As you start to grow, uh, you will sometimes have questions about expansion. There are lots of different reasons why you might want to expand. But Greylog and Elasticsearch and Mongo are all meant to expand laterally. They're, you don't just put bigger boxes on them. The trick for exp lateral expansion is just to add a different additional nodes. So in this case, we're going to first expand the Elasticsearch or OpenSearch nodes. I'm going to start calling them the OpenSearch nodes just because it's shorter. The OpenSearch nodes could be expanded for a couple of different reasons. You might be increasing your ingestion. So you know, in, in this example, we've got 10 to 20 gigs of log ingestion. And so if you're going to be retaining it for a little bit longer or you're going to be taking a lot more data in, you might want to add a second node to sort of spread that load across the two. Um, the second reason would be for replication. You might need to replicate your data so that you can have a copy of it in case something were to happen to one of the nodes. The higher the level of criticality, the more uh, it's worthwhile to consider replication. But that's another reason you might, in a small environment, go ahead and add a second node rather than just stick to the one uh, that we started with. Um, the uh, the process of adding nodes to uh, open search is really simple. It's not much more than making sure that the configuration files match for the original node, updating the configuration files for both of the two servers to let them know where their peers are and update the Greylog server so that it knows how to reach Elasticsearch uh, 
as well. So there's which the, what the peers are as well. And that's it. You spin it up. It's going to uh, open search is going to detect the second member of its cluster. It's going to uh, automatically take over the redistribution of uh, shards and indices, depending on what it needs to do. If it's replication, it'll spread all that for you. If it's not a replicated environment, it will simply spread part of the load from on one server and leave the other part on the on the first server. And you don't have to do anything. So it just takes a little time, depending on the size of the of the uh, environment it may take minutes to hours and then it just goes on as if uh, nothing has changed and so it's very simple to expand after you've expanded open search you may want to expand gray log so gray log might be for reasons of ingestion again you know if you reasons to expand gray log here we've got 20 to 50 gigs of logs you may not need it any more for Elasticsearch to be able to handle that but for gray log you might want to have a second node um, for two reasons. One would be just for in, for processing. If you have a, a relatively modest gray log server node, you might want to put a second one in there so that it can uh, keep up as it starts to get to the higher levels of ingestion. Uh, and when you do that, you need to add a load balancer, as you'll see from this diagram. That will allow you to have uh, users hit that load balancer and then use whichever gray log server is most available. They will communi they'll communicate with the load balancer and they will throttle themselves uh, if they need to, uh, but they also provide a failover. So if you have one node go down, the other node is still is still up, and that will give you some some failover capabilities. And then with that load balancer, and that might be a reason to do it, even if you don't have the volume necessary to require it, you might need the uh, high availability and the redundancy. So that's another reason why people might add a load balancer in a second gray log node. Now, the thing to note in all of these, uh, we're showing you uh, server images. It looks like it's gotta be physical hardware. What we're really discussing here though, is just something that we refer to as self-managed. It's not necessarily on-prem. These could be virtual boxes. You could be AWS or Azure or whatever your cloud provider is. And these just oper these represent operational nodes. So as long as you give these nodes the, the uh, specs that we've got at the bottom corners of each of the slides, you should get the same uh, level of performance and all of the same architectural considerations should apply. Uh, so uh, you will notice that, you know, we've got two, two now we've got two Elasticsearch, we've got uh, our two OpenSearch, we've got two Graylog. Uh, we still only have one MongoDB. And as we go, you'll look at to that one as well. Uh, let's see. So this next, as we get to 20 to 50, the, the last bit of redundancy you might want to add as you add a third gray log node or add a third, you, you might not need a third gray log node, but you might want to add a third node for MongoDB so that you can create what they call a replica set. A replica set is essentially that. It's a replica of the configuration or the data contained within the primary Mongo database and it's spread, copies are spread across the other two, such that if one were to go down, you've got two more with working copies that will continue to work. You can then replace your downed uh, node with a new node. It will then reshare all the replication data and you can go back to having a, a highly available uh, uh, Mongo cluster. So you can do that with another instance uh, if you want. And if you don't, in this case, if you don't need another Greylog server, there's no need to spin up another. You can put it on a VM. Even if you're using physical hardware, you can run this third Mongo instance on a VM and it just needs to be there as a tiebreaker. So you have to have an odd number. Um, that will give you the ability to back up Mongo or have copies of Mongo, have it redundant. You can still use and probably should still periodically use the Mongo dump or some other uh, method to back up that node. Uh, even snapshots in a VM would be uh, a good way to do it because, uh, you know, even though you've got it redundant, you want to make sure you've got the backups because it is literally the brains of Greylog and everything you've ever done in Greylog as far as configuration lives in there. And if it were to go down, you might be unhappy. And so you want to make sure that you back that up in some uh, reliable fashion. So you'll notice that the CPU and uh, RAM suggestions get a little bit higher as we go, as you might expect. Uh, as more load is put on them, uh, they need more resources. Uh, so we've added a third Elasticsearch node at 50 to 100 gigs of log ingestion. 
the things you need to be concerned with when you're talking about uh, storage for uh, whether it's open search or elastic search, you need to be concerned about the amount of data that you're taking in per day. And then you need to be concerned about how long you're going to keep that data in what's called an active state or a, a live state. Uh, there's two ways to retain data in Greylog, and we don't have the uh, second way actually illustrated here. The first way is online, what we refer to as online storage. And that means you can sit down at a Greylog console, type as query, and it'll go back to, you know, it, it will show you everything that's in there. That's an online query. So most companies will keep 30 to 90 days of data online. And after that, that data rolls off into an archive and that archive data goes out and is highly compressed and it's still available. You can search it in place uh, or you can, you know, which is, uh, you know, very basic search capabilities you, or you can bring it back into Greylog and then you can run it through the GUI again. It'll be just like it was the first time and will allow you to, uh, to do your queries or frequently even to a third machine before uh, to, so that you don't have to put it back into production. So, you have to decide how long you want to keep it online. The longer you keep it online, the more storage you're going to need in Graylaw or in the open search. That is going to be typically your highest speed storage. So it's going to be your most expensive storage. It pays to archive as quickly as possible because that goes on your commodity storage. Um, the other thing you have to be concerned about when you're talking about open search is your uh, RAM, your, your system RAM, because the general rule of thumb is because uh, open search lives on uh, in a Java environment, you're going to get, assign a portion of the RAM for the system to the Java environment. The, uh, uh, the general rule of thumb is half of available system RAM is assigned to the uh, open search to Java and never more than 31 gigs. So no matter how much system RAM you have, never go above 31 gigs. There are good reasons you can read, uh, you can go find it as good reasons why you don't want to go over 31 gigs. Just take our word for it for the time being, just don't go over 31 gigs. If you need more processing power, add another node. This is really designed for lateral expansion and past a certain point, you don't get, uh, you get diminishing returns as you grow uh, system resources. So you will see that the uh, Greylog server uh, are, is getting a, a higher resource requirements as well, and that will continue to happen as you as you grow the system. Here, you were, we're now adding as we get to 100 to 300, we're now adding a third Greylog node, we're adding a fourth Open Search node, and you'll notice Open Search expands faster than Greylog, and that's typically going to be true. Past a certain point, you're going to add a lot of a very large number of open search in these very, very large environments. Uh, and you will eventually top out and you probably won't go past a certain number of gray log uh, servers. As we get to three to 500 gigs, you can see we've got four gray log servers and six open search servers. These are reference architectures. It, it, there's a quite a bit of variety depending on what you're taking in, how uh, homogenous that data is, uh, how, you know, what kind of pattern it comes in, if it's even or if it's spiky. Uh, there's a lot of different considerations, but this is a good reference for you to get a look at how to think about uh, building a Greylog cluster and how it might scale. Because it's so easy to scale, Greylog is, is as easy as I mentioned Open Search was to scale, simply match the configuration files, make sure the others are aware of it and away you go. Um, growing this is very simple. Uh, it can take, once you've done it a couple of times, it can take minutes to add another node and then can have a huge impact on your, your performance. Uh, there are a million different things that can affect the, uh, the overall architecture, but this is a good place to start. If you're planning, trying to make planning uh, decisions for next year uh, or planning to purchase Greylog or trying to build even an open source that the, everything still applies, you, uh, this is a good place to start. You, you, from there, you may find you need more or you need less, but this is a good place to start. And um, I thank you very much for joining us today. I hope this was useful to you. And look here for more on the topic uh, coming real soon. Thanks a lot.